Imagine that there are 10 people who have come in to participate in an experiment they believe on perception. And I've told you, I'm going to show you a line. This is the size of the line. And I'm going to show you three other lines, and I want you to tell me which one matches it. The line is this big. The answers I've given you, I've given you another. A is clearly the right answer. B is way too big. C is tiny. D is giant. There's no perceptual challenge here. It's very easy. I line 10 people up in a row, and I ask person number one, what is the answer? A is the clear right answer, and person one says B. Person two says B. Person three, B, 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 B. We get to the last person in the row. By the way, they're the only real experimental subject. I've paid everyone else to say whatever the first person says, which is going to be the wrong answer. And the person in the last seat, 33% of the time, will cave and will give a wrong answer, regardless of what they know to be true. They won't necessarily do it the first time. The first time they'll scratch their head and say, those people are blind. They got it wrong. And they won't do it the second time. But if we repeat it, three, four, five trials, 33% of people will cave. They will cave whether they're housewives or physicians, whether they're lawyers, doctors, Indian chiefs, does not matter their social status. It doesn't matter how old or young they are. The phenomena holds up every single time and it's chilling to watch. Interviews done with the people who sat in the 10th chair after this is debriefed all say, either I began to doubt my own thinking. I began to think there's something must be wrong with me if nine other people are giving a different answer. Or they say, I could not deal with being different anymore. I couldn't take the pressure. No one is begging him to say the wrong answer. I couldn't take being the one voice of reason. Now you may ask, what does this have to do with bystander phenomena? Well, if I go into the middle school lunchroom and I hear Rona's a loser, don't sit with Rona, we don't like Rona, ooh, Rona has cooties, we don't want Rona in our chair, on our lunch table, what strength of character and fortitude does it take to be the girl or the boy who says, Rona's a human being. She's Betzela Melokim. She's made in God's image like everyone else's. Let her sit at our table. It's just lunch. It takes a lot. And if you are in the um, parking lot of the mall and you're with four friends and your four friends all say, oh, those girls are terrible. Let's get away from them quickly. And three of your friends are saying that. What does it take to be the one who says, I'm calling the cops? Or I'm going over and, and, and get asking that girl who's being harassed if she needs a ride somewhere to be safe. It's hard to be the one person doing something when the people around you are not. Now, interestingly, we can radically decrease that 33% that caves if one other person in the row gives a different answer. And it doesn't even have to be the right answer. But if we break the wall of conformity down... Every, it gets easier. More options are possible.